Hi, it's Ray from Pro Shaper Workshop. We're back on the Porsche 550 panel. Uh, I want to thank everybody for watching the recent videos. Uh, all our numbers are going up, and please subscribe and uh, give us some likes and make some comments. We try to answer a lot of the comments. So here's what we left off. Uh, we're going to do some obvious that this needs to be shrunk right here. Uh, somebody asked in the comments, how do you know where to do the work? Well. In this case here, we've got it uh, clamped on with the rubber tip clamps, and you see this is way out of whack here, way out of whack here, and way out of whack here. So those are the, the areas that are just screaming out that they need attention. So this needs to be shrunk here, and um, this is the internal shrink, it's the edge shrink. So I'm going to mark where I'm going to shrink. I'm going to do my gathering tool trick again over in here pull those in. This is an internal shrink. Now I showed you on the front panel where I could take the torch and because I have a wire form and it's not a wood buck that would burn up, the, the wire form can take the, the heat no problem and I could shrink that effortlessly with the torch, just bink, bink, bink. But I'm, gonna, I'm going to choose to do it a little bit different. I might resort to the torch later on, but I'm going to see if I can uh, anneal this first and while I'm annealing this I go okay why don't I anneal this too because it'll make it a lot easier to bring these down. So that's what we're going to do right now. Uh, you've seen the annealing operation. We might show a minute of it or two but we don't have to show the whole thing. We're going to anneal this spot and we're going to anneal this one and this one and that should be enough to take care of that. Maybe one more anneal. typical danger one so what you want to do with that is you're going to kind of open it up a little bit so you can put it on the edge here. Saved it.
So in the process of uh, knocking these gathers down with the wheel to smooth it out, it actually will shrink until it gets smooth again and then it starts stretching. So you can use some pretty good pressure as long as you can get it through there to settle those in, but then it'll start stretching again, so you got to be careful. All we're doing here is just uh, smoothing it all up right now. It's not an arrangement. We'll have to move the arrangement around to get it to fit the buck really nice. And uh, the skill sets is not that great. I mean, it's just knock all that stuff down uh, and smooth it all up. And when you're wheeling, uh, you want to go through in a way that you don't get top wheel bite and you don't get bottom wheel bite. Uh, if I go through here, there's a valley right there. If I go like that, I'm going to get these top wheel bites. You can see them right there. That's a no-no. You don't want to do that. So in order to get through there, you have to go through this way, 90 degrees to the valley, and you want to go low pressure because that's a reverse in there. Every time you go through there, you're actually making it worse for yourself unless you over shrunk it a little bit and then you're going to have which is what you want to try to do so that you can uh, get enough room to clean it up and then you have a situation where you might be going over a high crown like well this is a, a, a strong radius it's not really a high crown right there but if I go on that one like this then I'm going to get what's called a bottom wheel bite the bottom wheel bite doesn't look as bad. The residue of the top wheel bite's a little scratch like, but it goes out. The bottom wheel bite, you'll see on both sides. And again, you have to turn it either at an angle or 90 degrees to get rid of that. So you have to be on, on guard for that problem all the time. And if you have wide wheels, uh, you always have to be on guard for it. <laughs> The wide wheels give you, uh, I believe, a superior uh, planishing capability because it's covering more area. And uh, it's like the difference between a slapper and a hammer when you're taking dents out. When you're using a body hammer to take dents out, it only has a small little surface area on its face. The slapper has the big surface area. So it's more efficient. There are times when the big wheel can uh, cause a problem or not allow you to get in that tight area. In that case, you have to use a smaller top wheel or a smaller bottom wheel. And uh, it's good to have that variety. Uh, you can do it also with a planishing hammer. A planishing hammer can get into really tight spots. So I got it all smoothed out, pretty much. Uh, just a little residue of the shrink still. And we're gonna, now we're gonna set the arrangement and see what we have. Oh, so we fitted on the wire form. We found out it's hitting really hard right here. I'm gonna pound that out a little bit. Put it back over there and see what happens. Still right there. That's the beauty of the wire form. You can see everything. I would only use a wire form. A lot of people are afraid of wire forms, but um, to get over your fear, you should try making a very simple wire form. And, you know, we made one for a headlight uh, bucket. 
motorcycle tank. See what kind of freedom you have when you're making a wire for them. Okay, now we'll adjust it a little bit more and then see what we have. As you can see, using that profile view, now it's getting a really nice curve going there. It was a little deficient right here, so I had to pound it up a little. Now it can be solved also by doing another shrink. We already did a bunch of shrinks here, but just pounding it out just a little bit. All the flow is looking pretty good. This still needs to be arranged over in this corner here. but. Uh, it's one step at a time. Keep getting it closer and closer. and the wire form said I want more so you can see where the wire form scratching a little bit we took the tape came off so that's what happens but that's really good it gives you an indicator now just because that's hitting the wire there that doesn't mean you just hit that spot you have to hit that spot down but you blend it out fade it in all around so there's no what I call a mushroom head Hit it harder there with more intensity. Less hard, less intensity, and then you wheel it. So you do it a little at a time, little, 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 one step towards your goal. When I'm wheeling through here, I got to be aware of wheel bite. I got to make sure that I don't hit with the top wheel and I don't hit with the bottom wheel. So usually can feel a little friction too when that happens so paying attention always the most important thing is watching that panel if you see something odd happening with the panel it's probably something odd happening with the panel stop find out why you're getting that anomaly So it's constant feedback. Put it on the wire form. Wire form tells you what to do. Do what the wire form tells you what to do. And then check it. All right, so we found out that uh, right where the tail light uh, base is, it's hitting right on this corner right here. That's cleaned up quite a bit. But this is now the new problem, and that's what happens is the problem will shift from one spot to another spot to another spot until eventually it touches everywhere. I'm going to blast that out a little bit. Remember, most of this panel, I would say probably uh, the panel is formed by about 80% to 20%. 80 shrink, 20% stretch, very little stretching. Yeah. 
If you're using a sharp end of the hammer, you got to be careful because you can uh, ask the metal to do too much. So when you use the sharp end, it focuses your blow, but you have to hit it uh, much easier and let them accumulate rather than really wailing on it. All right, uh, without planishing it out, I'm going to put it on there and see if that helped it a bunch. It did help it a bunch. But it looks like I have to hit that whole top surface, blast that out a little bit. So I'm going to come out with it a little more. Okay. Now we'll clamp her up and see how that looks. All right, we can see where it's hitting on this wire right here now. So we're gonna blast that area out a little bit. We're gonna use the medium end, not the sharp end for that. You choke up on the hammer. So I call one of the most important uh, tools that you have is the horizon view. You can watch that horizon. It looks a little low right here on the horizon, a little low there. I'm going to pump that up right there. That just doesn't look right. It's always a nice graceful curve, so that's better. All right. And that's looking really good there. Maybe a little weak right here. And we'll wheel that out and try it. Uh, we set the arrangement as much as best we could. We had a big uh, mass of extra metal right in here and using the, the regular squeeze clamps I was able to get a nice shrink. You can see where I got a whole bunch of spines developing there. Whacked them in and I got a good shrink there. Uh, I still I got a lot of this out. I still got a little bit more right here and I still got a little bit more here and this curve needs a little attention yet. It's getting a lot better, uh, but we've got an hour into it already, so this would be uh, part three of the left rear Porsche 550 section, uh, tail section, and I think the next uh, hour installment, we might be able to do a video tomorrow, and uh, I think it'll get really close come tomorrow. Not perfection, but really, really close. All right, so that's as far as we're going to get and for today for one hour. Tomorrow we're going to do another hour on it. We'll get really close tomorrow, I believe. Uh, this is Ray from Pro Shaper Workshop. Keep watching. Thank you.